everyone and welcome back to my channel for today's video um, I got this idea I mean I've seen other people do it um, but with this whole quarantine thing going on one of the things I've been doing a lot at the weekend because football is being cancelled is play games I'm trying to finish a couple of games that I started like months ago and I thought hey why not do a video about my Nintendo games collection um, I think I'm gonna do this as a two-parter because I have both like regular console games and then I have the portable console games of like the DS and 3DS so I think I'm gonna split it in two and today just do the um big console games so it's probably gonna be pretty rambly I mean I'm just gonna show you what games I have and then tell you a little bit about each of them and what I think and uh, I'm gonna give you like a little pre-warning <laughs> that half of these games are Zelda, I think. Um, for like GameCube and Wii U, I only have a couple of games and they're all Zelda. So I'm gonna try to break it up a bit and do my Switch games in a different order where I talk about Zelda at the end because otherwise it's just gonna be a lot of Zelda. So let's get started. I'll start with the GameCube. Uh, like I said, I have two games on the GameCube and they're both Zelda or Zelda related. So the first one is Twilight Princess. Um, I, when I was um, looking at this game earlier, I noticed that it's in Dutch on the back. So I thought, oh yeah, well of course I bought it in Belgium because I played it as a teenager. And then I saw that it wasn't released until 2006. I didn't realize it was that young. Like I, I was convinced I played it as a teenager, but, move the mic, um, but that's not possible because in 2006 I was in my 20s. So, um, so yeah, I'm kind of surprised at that, to be honest. I'll talk more about this game uh, when I get to my Wii U games because um, I'm currently replaying it on the Wii U. I'm almost done with it. I only have two dungeons left. Um, but yeah, I've got some things to say about this game because I talked about it in my ranking video and I had a whole other idea about it then. But the GameCube didn't have a very long life, um, so I don't really play on it anymore. But I, I'm a hoarder, so I'm not going to get rid of it and I'm not going to get rid of the games either. So that's the first one. The second one I have on the GameCube is actually this... Legend of Zelda Collector's Edition. Um, it's this, I mean, all GameCube games are. It's this tiny little disc. And it has four Zelda games on it. It's, I bought it on eBay. Because by the time I got a GameCube, I didn't know that this even existed. So, um, got it on eBay. Didn't, didn't pay an arm and a leg for it. It was pretty cheap. I don't, I like as much as it's a collector's edition. I don't think it was that popular, probably because it was on the GameCube. It does say promotional disc. I'm not sure if it was free and I ended up paying for it or what it came with. I'm not sure. Adventure of Link, 
Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, which I thought was epic when I bought it because Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask didn't exist on the GameCube, but I've since played all of these games on the 3DS. Uh, and again, don't really play my GameCube anymore. It's interesting because The Legend of Zelda, the first game, I am pretty sure that I finished this as a child. I remember playing it and my dad, like I don't remember finishing it, but my dad seems to think I finished it. And I don't know how because I replayed it on the 3DS and I had to look up a guide at some point because I didn't know where to find the next dungeon. Like there's no guidance within the game on where to go. You can essentially also do some dungeons in like a random order because you don't really need a specific item to go to the next one. But there's one dungeon that you find by burning a bush in like the whole of the game. Like you just have to pick a random bush and the dungeon is underneath it. And I don't know how people found that. I don't even know how I found that back as a kid because there were no online guides back then. Um, just by burning every damn bush in the game, I, th I guess. I don't know. I had to look it up online when I replayed it. And I just thought to myself, how did, how did we ever finish it without online games? Uh, online guides. I'm pretty sure I did. I just don't know how. And then Zelda 2 which I remember as my child, as a child was my favorite game, is a piece of crap. Like, oh my god, it is, I think it is universally accepted to be the most difficult Zelda game ever made. There, it is so many hidden passageways that you just don't know where they are. That one I definitely finished. I remember playing that last, like, boss battle. But again, don't know how I did it. Um, I guess as a kid, you we just played games for like months on end and really enjoyed the searching part of it as we're now when I get stuck on something for three days. I look it up because I don't have the patience anymore and I really should stop doing that because it does take away a little bit of playing the game. Um, it'll always hold a special place in my heart because it is, it was my favorite um, game as a kid, but I don't honestly know why, because it was so difficult. Um, and then Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, I mean, they're classics. We all know them, I think, if you know Zelda anyway. So that's the other one I have, this collector's edition. And then moving on to the Wii U, the, um, I bought a Wii U specifically to buy Zelda games on it. I um, bought it off a colleague of mine who was no longer playing it. So I got it pretty cheap. Um, and I bought the remakes. So I bought the... Oh, this is going to fall. Um, I bought the Zelda Wind Waker HD remake. This is actually a game that came out on the GameCube, but I never bought it. And I'll tell you why. Um, I didn't think this was a real Zelda game when it was released. It looks extremely cartoony. And I thought, for some reason, that it was like a collection of mini games from Zelda. Like there's a character that pops up every now and then in Zelda called Tingle. And he has his own game out released by Nintendo that's like mini games with Tingle. And I thought this was something like that. That was like a bunch of mini games from within Zelda. Because it just didn't look like a real game to me. And then years ago when I started watching Zelda videos on YouTube and I watched like people's top 10 favorite Zelda games, almost everyone has this very high in that list. And I thought, oh my God, this is an actual <laughs> legit full on Zelda game. 
so I really wanted to play it. If I were to buy it on the GameCube, though, online, I would pay like 150 or 160 euro for it because it's become so rare. So I decided to get the Wii U so I could buy this game. Uh, I didn't pay $27.99 for it, by the way. I did buy a used copy, but I think I bought it from GameStop. And they were doing a half price sale on used games at the time, so I only played like paid like 15 euro for it. I don't love it as much as everyone else does. I will admit that. I think it's a good game, but I don't know if my expectations were too high because on YouTube people raved about this so much. Um I don't think it's a very challenging game if I'm being honest I dungeons are not my favorite part of Zelda um, but I find the dungeons in this game too easy what I don't like about dungeons what I genuinely, generally just don't like about playing games is fighting I'm not great with fighting monsters I, it's not that I'm bad at fighting them but I get really stressed out when I have to fight um, and obviously in Zelda when you go into a dungeon that's what you have to do in, pretty, in almost every room is fight and that's why it's not my favorite part what I do love about Zelda dungeons is when you have to solve puzzles to get out of a room I think and like the searching on how to make your way through the dungeon. I love that. And I found that in this game, they weren't very challenging. I found the whole game not to be super difficult, to be honest. I think I finished it in like a week and a half, which is extremely fast for a console game. If if it was a handheld game, I'd be like a week and a half. is actually kind of long. But for a console game, I found it pretty short. And I also didn't think it had much of a story and again I think everyone is gonna like disagree with me because it is a very popular game among Zelda fans but I didn't think the story was amazing in it like people harp on how Breath of the Wild doesn't have a lot of a story I think it has a better story than this like collecting the memories and everything I think tells you a nice story and I just found that this one didn't. I didn't hate it. Like, I actually really liked playing it, and I think I'm gonna replay it soon just to see if there's things about it that I may have missed. But, um, I think there's like 19 Zelda games or something out, and it's definitely my top 10. I just don't love it as much as everyone on YouTube seems to. But then again, my Zelda ranking is usually different because I um, am not a gamer. I love games for different reasons, so yeah. Wind Waker. And then the next HD remake is Twilight Princess. I, like I said, I'm currently replaying it. so afraid of replaying this. In my Zelda ranking video, I said that there were two games I never wanted to replay, and that was Ocarina of Time and Twilight Princess. Ocarina of Time I've replayed many times, but it creeps me out so much that I just don't want to do it again. Like, it causes me too much stress. And I thought the same about Twilight Princess, but the truth is that I hadn't replayed it since I was in my 20s. And I remembered it being a very creepy game, but it's not. Like, I don't know what I was so worried about. Um, it's actually shot up in my ranking above Ocarina of Time because it is so good, and I just forgotten how good it is. The one dungeon that I was really, that really creeped me out was Arbiter's Grounds, and again, in every YouTube video I've seen of Zelda, 
where people do like my top 10 favorite dungeons. Arbiter's Ground is always really high up that list. And I was like, why? It's so scary. Um, but I watched a lot of playthroughs of that dungeon on Zelda and I think I might have desensitized myself to it. I don't know, because when I actually played it, I thought it was amazing. It didn't creep me out at all. At the end of it, I was like, damn, that was a really good dungeon. And interestingly, most of the memories I have from Twilight Princess are from that dungeon. But I didn't know that. When I was playing it, I thought, oh, this is from this dungeon. Oh, this is from this dungeon too. Like a lot of the memories I had from that game were from that dungeon, which means it must have left a big impression on me. And actually a lot of memories I have from playing Zelda when I was younger, even though I would have been in my 20s already, um, are from this game. And again, didn't realize they were all from this game. It's such a good game. Uh, I'm really happy that I'm replaying it. I actually think as soon as I only have two dungeons left, the, I just finished City in the Sky. So I just have um, the Palace of Twilight and then the castle left. I think once I finish playing it, I'm going to replay it like straight away. My only problem with this game, and it is like a tiny thing because I do think it is pure brilliance, is the lack of side quests. I'm big on side quests. I think it's why I love Breath of the Wild so much. It has like a million side quests. But not so much in this game. I actually think that once you go to City in the Sky, from there on, there's nothing left to do except for dungeons. Like, after City in the Sky, you pretty much go straight to Palace of Twilight, and after that, you pretty much go straight to the castle. And I think that's why I'm kind of putting off playing it at the moment, because I'm not looking forward to just doing dungeons in a row. But you lose the ability to do anything else in the game once you reach that kind of end third of the game. Um, unless I'm missing something, but I don't think I am. So, that's my only thing about it. Um, but other than that, like, such a good game. I also think this has a really great story. This, for me, has the best introduction to any Zelda game. It has the longest by far, like before you even get to the whole part of the Twilight Realm and Midna and that whole story. It takes a long time to get to it. Like you just get to know your own village and the people in it and your horse. And I just think it's so well done, the start of this game. So yeah, highly recommend it if you've never played Zelda before. So then on to my Switch collection, and like I said, I'll leave my Zelda games to the end just to give you a little bit different things to talk about. Um, oh, actually, quick honorable mention for my Switch, I did download Skyward Sword, which is my favorite Zelda game. It's a Wii game, but you can play it on the Wii U, and... Um, yeah, that for me is like the best Zelda game ever made. And they, I'm hoping, there's a lot of rumors about it, but it's not confirmed. I'm hoping they're going to remake that for the Switch either this year or next year. Um, a lot of people are expecting it this year. My theory is, but nobody else has said this, so I'm probably wrong. My theory is that they're going to port these two to the Switch this year. And they're going to release Skyward Sword next year because it'll be its 10th anniversary next year. And I think it makes more sense for Nintendo to release it then. And that they'll release Breath of the Wild 2 in 2022. A lot of people think that'll be released next year, but I don't think so. Um, and I would be perfectly happy if all these re-released games can tie me over. But we'll have to wait and see. Then... I also want to mention on the Switch, I have one downloaded game that is not available in a cartridge, and that's The Walking Dead. I do want to talk about that game because it's, I, I 
think it's a great game. I initially played it on the Xbox 360, but after season two, they stopped making it for that console. I then downloaded it on my iPad and never finished season three because it was really not that much fun to play on an iPad. They released season one on the Switch and then season four, which is the last one, also on the Switch. But the company who made it went bankrupt. And so seasons two and three were never out on the Switch and I just never got to finish that game. But they were recently bought by another company who then released the other seasons. I know season two is out already. I'm not sure season three is. I'm gonna look into downloading them maybe this or next weekend so that I can just play through the whole series again and finally finish, or finally start season four. I downloaded season four like months ago and haven't started it because I didn't finish season three on my iPad. So I'd love to get into that. If you don't know it, it's from Telltale Games and it's very story-based. It, it, it is The Walking Dead, but there's not a lot of fighting in it. You play through the game making choices and your story changes depending on the choices you make. I It does bother me a little bit that it pretty much always ends the same, but you can play with different characters. Like um, a colleague of mine was also playing season one at the same time I was, and we both chose to save a different person's life and have that person with us for a part of the story, and they had different abilities and did different things. Ultimately, I think if you choose to save one person over the other, they both end up dying at some point. Like, I don't think it makes a huge difference to the story, but it does. I think it kind of affects how your main character develops and uh, what kind of person they become. It's really cool. It's just season one was incredible. You had like five hours of gameplay per episode. There's five episodes per season. It was a really cheap game, well worth the money. Uh, I cried at the end of the season like it was, it's a really emotional game. And then the company became so big that they started making a lot of other games in the same way and season two became like two hours of gameplay per episode which you know severely cut down on how long the game was I still liked it season three I didn't think was that good but I mean season two wasn't nearly as good as season one and then season three was just plain not good but again that could have been because I played it on my iPad however I think most people didn't think it was that good according to a lot of people season four was better but they all thought it was time to wrap up the series which is never a good sign so I'm kind of worried a little bit about finishing it but um, I will if you I highly recommend it but do if you start with season one which you obviously would don't take that as the measure for the rest of the game because the other seasons all pale in comparison to the very first. Um, just want to put that out there. Okay, so the other game that I have uh, as a cartridge is L.A. Noir. This is also a game I originally played on the Xbox 360. They remade it in HD for the Switch, and it is a really good game. Um... It's made by Rockstar Games, and I think that's also a company that went bankrupt after this game was released, even though it did really well. It's very uniquely made, and I was hoping there would be other games like it, but I'm pretty sure they haven't made any other games uh, after this one. So, this is a um, detective game. You're a detective, and you have to solve you start in um, traffic and then you work your way up to different departments to like homicide and uh, 
um, vice, I think you end with arson. You do like four or five cases per department and then you get promoted each time. And you can finish a case with one star. If you do a really bad job, you can finish a game with five stars and anything in between. You can replay cases. I've done that many times because in the beginning, I very often end the case with one star. I'm not very good at it, um, but I do love playing it. It's made, I think the way it was made was that they filmed the whole game as a movie and then turned it into a game because there are actors in this game that I recognize from TV, like, uh, that I can say, oh, he's from that show, oh, he's from that show, like, you can, they, you can tell who they are, and you're supposed to interrogate or question witnesses and interrogate suspects, and based on their facial expression, you're supposed to be able to tell whether they're telling the truth, lying, and whether you can accuse them. So you collect evidence throughout the case. You write everything down in a notebook, and then you question witnesses based on whether you are correct in if they're lying or telling the truth, they will give you more information. So if you think they're telling the truth, you play good cop. If you think they're lying, or um, it's like doubt, you play bad cop and you try to get more information out of them. And if you can prove that they're lying based on the evidence you've found, you can accuse them and choose the right piece of evidence from your list and uh, get more information out of them that way. And that is so much harder to do than it sounds like. Sometimes I think they, based on the way that they're looking away with their eyes, that they're lying, and then it turns out they're not. You have to really meticulously study their face and the way they're looking at you or talking to you. I have very often thought, oh, this piece of evidence disproves that, and then it turned out to be the wrong piece of evidence. So, based on how well you do, you can also convict the wrong person of the crime. So, it's very interesting. I think it's a great game. The only thing that, first of all, the ending sucks. I'm going to warn you right now. Um, the only thing that bothers me about this game, and that's just because I'm really bad at it, is you have to regularly do um, high-speed car chases. And I get really motion sick when I do them. I have that with all games. I even have that with some Zelda games that I get motion sick, which is why I would love to play a lot of these games on the Switch because the smaller screen works for me. I, if I play this on the portable Switch, I don't have so many issues with it. Um, then if I play it on my TV, it makes me nauseous a lot. But that's partly because I'm really bad at high speed car chases. I crash into things all the time and then have to restart them. So as the game progresses, you do more and more of them and that bothers me a little bit. But there's so many cases, like I said, you can replay them. You have like side um, quests, I guess you could call them, when the, there's a voice over the police radio um, calling anyone who's nearby to do like work to go for like an armed robbery or um, violence or like domestic violence, things like that. And they're like little side quests you can do. So what this is, you can play this for a really long time. It is set in 1950s or 1960s Hollywood, which is pretty cool. Like when you're driving through it, I recognize areas that I've seen in modern day LA. And you can see what they look like back then. Um, does it say exactly what? Oh, 19, 1940s Hollywood. Um, yeah, which is pretty great. I don't know if you can tell because it'll be a mirror image, but on this sign, it even says Hollywood Land, which is what the sign used to be called back in the day. So it's very accurate and a really, really good game. Highly recommend it. Then I have this uh, fitness boxing game, which I bought because, you know, I don't leave my house a lot and I wanted to stay 
fit, but I I played it for a little while and I haven't played it in a really long time now. It's kind of, it's what I, and I know this, I always do this with fitness games. I think it looks like fun and this is the one I'm definitely going to keep using and then I don't, so I really shouldn't invest money anymore like it was 50 quid. That's a lot. Um, I shouldn't buy fitness games anymore. It's fun. I mean, if you are a person who does fitness at home and you can stick with it, then it's, I would recommend it. It's a fun game. It's a great workout too. It definitely gets your heart rate going. You box at music, like at, a, at the tempo of music and it tells you like when to punch and you have to try and make it perfect the timing. They give you like different punches, um, different type of punches that you can do. And it's, it's fun enough. Um, it's just, I lose interest in games like this pretty quickly. So yeah. Then, uh, the last non-Zelda game I have is Super Mario Odyssey. I am actually recording this video like two days too early because I just ordered Animal Crossing and that's going to come in, I think, Monday or Tuesday, but I don't have it yet. Um, so yeah, I'm sorry, like, let me know if you want me to tap on these things because if I want to tap on them, I have to do it here and then take a break from talking and just tapping, but I always end up rambling, so... Um, do you guys want me to tap on things or just prefer me to whisper? Let me know because if for my next part of this collection video, I can incorporate that if you really want me to. I just find it awkward to do it on this side of the mic and on this side, you don't hear it that well. So, um, yeah, let me know. Anyway, um, yeah. Super Mario Odyssey, there, it's like, got a weird language on the back. Don't know. Anyway, I really love this game. I haven't finished it because I got stuck on one boss and literally have not tried to play it since. I don't know why. I was talking with my colleague about it and he said, you do know you can just get back on your ship and go to a different world, right? And I was like, yeah, but eventually I'm going to have to go back and defeat this guy. I've seen it people do it on YouTube. It looks so simple and I can't master the controls. And it made me really motion sick. So I stopped playing it. Um, like that one boss. If you've played this game, it's the, um, it's the boss that steals the sparkling water from the people. Like you have to use your, uh, jet pack, I think it is, to fly up and then try and spray him with water and I just can't do it. I cannot do it. I keep falling down. I just don't, I think I'm not using the controls correctly, but I don't know. I'm just not good at it. But I know there's a lot of rumors about a second one of this coming out this year or next year and I really do want to finish it. It's fun to play. It really is. Um, I just got stuck on it and I honestly think I probably still have a lot to play. I think I'm only about halfway done with it, if even, so, um, yeah, Super Mario Odyssey. to our Zelda games. So the first one obviously is Breath of the Wild. The whole reason that I bought a Switch, um, the only game I own for a very long time. I mean, I love this game so much. When I first saw the trailer for it, I didn't want to play it because it didn't look like a real Zelda game to me, different from Wind Waker. I knew it was a real Zelda game, but it's so different from any Zelda game. I thought, no, that's not my type of game. But boy, was I wrong. Um, I think a lot of people still don't think it's worthy of like being in the Zelda franchise, but I think it is a fully fledged Zelda game. It has a lot of the same characters, a lot of the same villages with a little bit more added. It has Zelda, it has Link. Like I love it, and but it is a completely different way of playing the game. Um, if this is the only Zelda game you've ever played, I don't know how you're going to feel about others because every other Zelda game is way more linear than this one. This is probably, at least I've heard from other gamers, the 
most open world game ever made. Apparently no other open world game is as open as this one. So it's very different, but it is why I love it. I currently finished my fourth playthrough of it. I think I may restart playing it again today. I love that you can play it in a different order each time, and I do. I do the Divine Beast in a different order each time. Um, the only thing that is linear is the Great Plateau, which is the very beginning, and it really serves as a tutorial for the game. It teaches you how to use the different controls and what you can do in the game by by letting you play it, but in a controlled environment. But once you leave, once you get off the Great Plateau, you can do whatever you want. If you want to go straight to Ganon without doing anything else, you can. I've seen people on YouTube do it. They fail most of the time. I think I've only seen one or two successfully do it after many, many attempts, after probably finishing the game once just to learn how to fight better. Um, but you can do that if you want. You're not obligated to do anything else in the game aside from the Great Plateau. It's the only thing you have to complete. And I love that. I, um, yeah, I love this game. I just finished playing it and thought I was going to wait a couple of months because it's a daunting game. It, it takes very long to get through. But then every time I watch a YouTube video and they show even a clip of Breath of the Wild, I'm like, oh, I really want to play it again. I just love it. Uh, I love being in that world. And um, yeah, I can't wait for the second part to come out. But I'm a little bit worried because the one complaint that everyone had about this game is that it didn't have dungeons. And that is probably part of the reason I love it so much. No dungeons. It has a lot of shrines. But shrines are rarely to fight. They're mostly to solve puzzles, which I love. Um, but I'm pretty sure looking at the trailer for the second version, or like the sequel, that it's gonna have dungeons. And I I don't hate that. I mean, every Zelda game pretty much does. Uh, even this one, to a certain extent, like the Divine Beasts could be considered dungeons, but again, there's very little fighting in those. Um, the castle probably is the most like a dungeon. It, that has a lot of monsters in it, but, you know, you're not obligated to go through it. I... I don't know how I feel about that, but I'm just going to have to suck it up and play it anyway. Um, I think part of the reason I love this game so much is because it's all outside. The majority of it is in the open, like in the overworld. And that makes me like it more. Like I, I love playing outside Zelda rather than inside, if that makes sense. I don't know. Oh, and one of the things I love so much about this game is that it has like a million side quests. It has so many side quests that alone can keep you busy for weeks. Like, I think the first time you play this game, still having to explore everything, it can easily take you four or five months. And every time I replay it, knowing everything, it still takes me like two months to get through. And that's playing like three hours every day. There's just so much to do. Uh, yeah, it's an incredible game. Pretty much every new Switch game, I think, is 69 euro. This is totally worth that money. You get so much gameplay out of it. This is the opposite, and it is Zelda Link's Awakening. This is a remake of the portable game that first was released, I think, on the Game Boy Advanced, and then later on the Game Boy Color. I played the Color version a few times. I love this game. I do. I loved the portable version. I love the remake. It is a very true remake to the original. I love the graphics. They are so cute. And um, if I want to just have like a quick game that I feel like playing, I'll play this. My only problem with it is, is that that's exactly what it is. A very quick game. This game is 
no more than five days of gameplay. The first time I played it, I didn't remember much from the original, so I had to search a good bit, and I think it took me five days. I just finished replaying it, and it took me three days, and I I think it's the third time I replayed it, so it, it took me like three days the time before as well. It's a portable remake, and there are other portable Zelda games that I would that I think are great to be remade for the Switch, but portable Zelda games are not long. None of them are. Um, and I knew that from the original that this wasn't going to be very long. My problem with it is that it also cost 69 euro. If they release this for 29 euro, I would be like, totally worth the money, get it, awesome game. And it really is a great game, but for 69 euro, I want more than three days of gameplay. So... I just think they should have sold this cheaper. I think it is cheaper now, but it wasn't when it was released. And I'm a little bit miffed at that, I'm not going to lie. Um, I'm just, yeah, wondering what else they're going to do. Like, I'm a big fan of the Oracle games. I think they're very underrated. Um, yeah, and then uh, Link's... Um, a Link Between Worlds, which was made for the 3DS. Also, awesome game. No more than a week to get through. The Oracle game's the same. They don't take more than a week to finish. And that's the original, which is harder to play. Like, it, you know, you have less um, buttons, I want to say, to put items to. So it just takes longer to get through it. If they were to remake those, I would love that. But they have to give them a cheaper price because I just don't want to pay 69 euro for a game that's going to take me three days to play. But if you can find it cheaper, I do recommend it. It's a great game. It's a great remake. I think it's a great introduction even into the Zelda series, although it's, it's a very different story uh, from any other Zelda game. But... I think it might be the only Zelda game, although don't quote me on that, that doesn't actually feature Zelda. But it is a really, really good game. It's just, I don't think it's long enough for the price. So yeah, uh, that's it. Uh, those are all my console games. I'm not really a gamer. Like, I love playing games, but I love playing Zelda, and I will occasionally play something else, but I'm not, like, uh, I can't play first-person shooter games because they make me too nauseous. I'm not, like, a Final Fantasy person. I've tried it. Not really my thing. I played Grand Theft Auto, but I had to abandon that after the whole submarine thing because I nearly threw up with when I played that. I was like, oh, this game. There's also too many, um, fast things that are happening in that game that end up making me nauseous. So, yeah, I'm not a gamer as such. I do want to try a lot of games on the Switch, because if you can play them portable, they're better for me. Uh, I'd love to try, like I said, of Animal Crossing coming, I'd love to try um, the Xenoblade game. Like, Breath of the Wild does a collab with Xenoblades, a very small one, and um, from footage I've seen from that game, it looks very similar to a Zelda game, so I think it might be something I like. I'd love to try Metroid, never played it, a colleague of mine is a huge fan of Metroid. He doesn't play Zelda, I think he tried it once and he told me that Metroid reminds him a lot of Zelda, but it... Zelda is just not his thing, but he told me I would probably really like Metroid, and there is a new one coming out on the Switch, which I think is the first time in like a decade that a new Metroid game has been released, so I might try that. I definitely want to branch out into other games, but I've always been a Zelda girl since I was a kid. It is the the game that got me into gaming, and it's the one game that I buy consoles for. I wouldn't have bought a Switch if it wasn't for Breath of the Wild, so I wouldn't have bought a Wii if it wasn't for Skyward Sword. So yeah, that's just always going to be the majority of my collection. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching.
watching, let me know what some of your favorite games are. I will take any recommendation for the Switch. I'd love to try new games. And if you've played Xenoblades, because I think it's been out for a couple of months, let me know what it's like and if you like it. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.